former Trump. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows reportedly offering damning testimony against the former president to special counsel Jack Smith in exchange for immunity. That's according to ABC News. Our chief legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed, is gathering details for us. Paula, what can you tell us? Well, Wolf, CNN previously reported that Mark Meadows had testified before a federal grand jury investigating former President Trump. Now we're learning more about what he has reportedly told investigators. Now, according to reports, he's spoken with investigators three times over the past year, and he's told them that in the weeks following the 2020 election, he says that he told Trump that these allegations of significant voter fraud were baseless. Now, that is such a significant break from the rhetoric of former President Trump. It's also a significant break from what Meadows has said publicly, including in a book that he wrote because he said he wanted to, quote, set the record straight. He reportedly told investigators that Trump was being, quote, dishonest and that obviously we didn't win. Now, Meadows is seen as a critical witness. He was the White House chief of staff, and he can offer keen insights into Trump's actions and state of mind following the election. Now, he also allegedly told investigators that he has never seen any evidence of fraud that would keep now President Joe Biden from the White House and that he agrees this was the most secure election in U.S. history. Paula, this uh, sounds like really, really uh, much more bad news for Trump in his own legal battles that are ongoing right now. Tell our viewers what this means for the former president. This is one of the most significant developments in this entire investigation. He is arguably the most valuable witness the special counsel has secured for their case, which is expected uh, to go on next March. And again, when the January 6th Committee on the Hill researched everything about the events leading up to January 6th, efforts to subvert the 2020 election, they concluded that all roads lead to Mark Meadows. So there have been questions, Wolf swirling, about exactly what he was doing uh, in relation to the special counsel investigation. Was he cooperating? Was he getting immunity? And remarkably, nobody in Trump's inner circle, none of his attorneys seemed to know exactly what was going on with Meadows. Now we know from these new reports that he has been granted immunity and has provided some really valuable testimony for prosecutors to use in their case early next year, what will likely be probably the only trial that former President Trump faces before the 2024 election. Interesting. All right, Paula Reed, thank you very much. I want to bring in our legal and political experts for analysis right now. And Ellie Honig, for some legal analysis from a legal standpoint, how significant do you believe this development is? Well, this is a genuine game changer for prosecutors and a major problem for Donald Trump. A couple things really stick out to me as important. Number one, we now know that Mark Meadows has been given immunity by DOJ, which means DOJ has decided we're going to give you a pass. We're not going to prosecute you, but in exchange, you now have to testify and testify truthfully. And this person, as Paula said, Mark Meadows was the ultimate insider, the closest person to Donald Trump throughout the key days and weeks. And that leads to the second big point, which is based on this new reporting, Mark Meadows has come clean. He is now saying, contrary to what he's been saying publicly for the better part of the last three years, he's now telling DOJ investigators there was no evidence of fraud and I said so directly to Donald Trump. That's crucial evidence for prosecutors. So what does it mean that Meadows was given immunity in this case, Ellie? So it means that prosecutors have struck a deal. When you have someone in Mark Meadows' situation, they gave him a subpoena, they asked him to testify in the grand jury. Usually someone in that situation, Mark Meadows' situation, takes the fifth. He has the right to do that. The counter move available to prosecutors then is to say, okay, now you're immunized, meaning we're not gonna prosecute you, you have immunity, you're getting a free pass, but now he has to testify. And again, prosecutors don't give out immunity lightly. They only do so if A, they believe the person is telling the full truth, and B, they believe that that testimony is essential for their prosecution. Interesting. Uh, Jamie, you're doing a lot of reporting on this. How worried should Trump be right now about what Meadows is actually telling the special counsel? Today is a very bad day for Donald Trump, but I would say, Wolf, I don't think it's a complete surprise for Trump because they have been wondering for months now uh, what Meadows was telling prosecutors. It was public, as uh, Paula said, that he had testified to the grand jury. We reported that back in June. But now Donald Trump knows that Mark Meadows has immunity. He is protected from whatever he might have been vulnerable to. 
I, w I want to add one thing to this. In addition to his testimony, Mark Meadows was ordered and co would come under this immunity agreement to hand over documents, anything relative, relevant, emails, text messages. So there may be a trove of physical documents, communications that also add to the picture and the evidence, Wolf. Yeah, very significant development indeed. Gloria, Meadows was certainly one of Trump's closest and highest ranking advisors over at the White House. It's hard to overstate how big of a blow yeah. potentially this is for the former president, right? Well, it, it certainly is. I mean, he was the enabler uh, for Donald Trump. If you wanted to get to Donald Trump, you texted, you texted Mark Meadows. Even Donald Trump's own children on January 6th were trying to get to the president, and they texted Mark Meadows. But there are a couple of interesting things that really stand out to me here. One of the things um, might work to Trump's advantage, believe it or not, because the question is, what was Donald Trump's state of mind about whether he lost the election? And while speaking to investigators, Meadows was asked if Trump ever said to him, you know, I know I've lost this election, but I'm going to fight anyway. And Meadows told investigators that he never heard Donald Trump say that. Now, we know that there are other witnesses who say that they have heard Donald Trump say that to them, but he didn't apparently to Mark Meadows. The other ironic thing is that Meadows said that there were times that he was so frustrated um, that he was thinking of quitting and leaving the White House, but ultimately he didn't leave because he wanted to help secure a peaceful transfer of power. How did that work out yeah. for him? <laughs> Interesting. Laura Coates is with us as well. Laura, uh, what does this tell you about the kind of evidence that Jack Smith's team has amassed in this case, at least so far? Well, we had all been wondering about the role that Mark Meadows was going to play in the overall evidence to a grand jury and ultimately at a trial. In fact, it was one of the reasons people sort of scratched their head quizzically for a second when they heard about the Fulton County charges against Mark Meadows because everyone assumed that Meadows was a cooperator in the January 6th investigation and probed by Jack Smith and assumed there might have been some sort of um, discussion between Fannie Willis and Jack Smith. We know, of course, there was no requirement that they had to communicate, but one wondered about that very aspect of it. But this tells you that they are looking to have direct evidence of what Donald Trump said, what he thought, and what he intended to do based on information in real time. We can often talk about how difficult it is, Wolf, to try to prove somebody's state of mind, trying to get inside the head of a potential defendant. Well, when you've got evidence to corroborate what the thought is, somebody who could actually hear or say, here is what I told the person, and not let the juries decide how they interpreted it, but actually hear perhaps what the person's response was to that information, that gives you that connective tissue for a jury to be able to draw some conclusions. What they will, of course, up to the jury. But ultimately, remember how significant these charges are for the January 6th probe. They include defrauding the United States. It includes obstruction. It includes very serious crimes. But the only way to really get a strong arm around all of the evidence in many ways it's not just circumstantially about what you think he may have been thinking, but by those who were in those rooms where it happened. Mark Meadows is a very significant witness for all of those reasons. And Laura, let me follow up with you. What, if anything, does this mean for the very separate Georgia election subversion case where Meadows is one of, the, one of Trump's co-defendants? You know, I've been given that a lot of thought in, in the part where Mark Meadows even tried to move his and remove his case to federal court. That's when the light bulbs began to go off for many lawyers about, hold on a second, is he trying to get to federal court because there could be some advantage in terms of getting that secured immunity deal if there is one to come from Jack Smith. Now, he could certainly still become somebody who were to plead guilty or who, were, who was to uh, cooperate in some form or fashion regarding the Fulton County case, but they are distinct charges charges from what's happening in um, Jack Smith's case and, of course, Georgia. But if you look at past being prologue, and by past I mean what happened to 
Ken Chesbro, what happened to Sidney Powell, what happened to Jenna Ellis, all people within that inner circle, they've gotten to many people not significant jail time, but probation, the equivalent to many as a kind of slap on the wrist, although felony charges for at least the last two is very significant. It could incentivize him to dispose of that case, hoping to have a lenient sentence akin to probation, maybe not even a felony charge, and then focus his attention and efforts on testifying and supporting the Jack Smith probe, which undoubtedly would have greater perhaps consequences if he were not to secure that immunity. And finally, Wolf, remember, getting the immunity deal is but one thing, but it comes with conditions. It's not a carte blanche for the rest of your life to get out of jail free. It actually requires you to do something, hold up your end of the bargain. He's got to do that.